Hi YouTube, a while back I sculpted this Graboid from Tremors. I'll leave a link to that video at the end of this one so you can have a look at how I made this if you want to. Um, in this video I'm going to be making a Shrieker, which is the kind of walking version of this um, from Tremors 2. So you can't really start more basic than this. I've just got some wire, wire cutters and this little drill. And basically I just make a couple of little holes in this wooden base, put some wires through, I've glued them in place just with some uh, super PVA glue and then I've just bent the wire just to give me this kind of rough shape of the legs and this kind of tail at the end there. I haven't done anything for the head yet, um, I've just done a sort of a, a wire sticking out where the head's going to go and then I can link the head on. For the next stage I've just wrapped some aluminium foil over the wire that just gives me this overall kind of form and I can work on top of this using milliput. If you haven't used milliput before, it's a two-part putty. You mix the two parts together in equal amounts and then it starts to set rock hard in about four hours. The great thing about milliput compared to oven bake clays is obviously you don't need an oven. It just sets at room temperature and then it's rock hard. So it's much harder than most oven bake clays. So next I covered the legs just with a very rough, basic, thin layer of milliput. It does get on your fingers a little bit, but I don't mind that. You just wash your fingers every so often. Um, you can see here that I've started to concentrate on the feet. And I'm just working this in, just with little sculpting tools. Um, it doesn't really matter. You can get lots of different shaped sculpting tools. And you just have to try the ones that you like, figure out which ones you prefer. Um, I use one that's got a sort of a bladed edge to it. It's quite nice for kind of making grooves and um, yeah, little kind of dips and things into it. Uh, you can see how it's going at this stage, but yeah, the tops of the legs are really rough looking. But you have to go through those stages where it looks a bit rough uh, before it ends up going through the other side and uh, looking much nicer. So I'll work those up a bit later. Next, I carried on covering with thin layers of milliput. I've covered the whole tail area and I've also gone and covered the belly area as well. All still quite rough and the milliput is still soft at this stage, so I can smooth it in a bit more and I can also add kind of ridges and things onto the tail later. I'd also started making this head section and I made this as like a flat sheet to start with and then basically as the milliput started to harden just a little bit I gradually kind of um, pushed up the sides so that it formed a curved kind of um, shape. I've drilled a hole in the end there and what I'm going to do is cut down this wire and I'll stick the wire into the hole with some super PVA glue. So while the milliput was still soft on his tail, I just used the bladed sculpting tool just to push into it and basically form those stripes. I also added some extra blobs of milliput on the front section here, and then I started working on the other sections for the head. So the top part of the head that I showed you before, that's completely hardened now at this stage. Um, and then I started working on the lower jaw. This is the middle part of the lower jaw in three sections um, and then I did the two side parts separately and I just tried to make them as kind of symmetrical as I could um, just sculpting into them and you can always refine these afterwards you know well once the mini parts dried you can actually use small files and things or sandpaper to refine it um, here you can see I've done the tongue this is still soft, as you can see, stuck to the um, foil a little bit. So I'll just let that dry a little bit and then I will shape it into the shape that I want and then let it set completely. So when the jaw sections and the tongue had almost fully dried, I just used that little hand drill that I showed you before to make holes in them in a similar way to how I'd done it with the top of his head. This just allows me to feed wires through and glue them into place into holes that I'd also made in the body. Next I added the sort of bulky section at the top of his legs which almost forms a kind of hump and I've added a lot of wrinkle textures into this and I think all of these wrinkles are going to look really good when it's all painted up. You can really kind of make those um, stand out nicely just with a bit of painting. Right you can see a few more additions at this stage. We've got the top of his head where he's got the kind of the heat seeking part. You can see I've added quite a few little ridges and things into that um, and that will look nice all painted up as well. I've done all of the kind of neck folds and they've all got little wrinkles in as well. 
Uh, on the back here, you've got these kind of extra lumps and things that uh, kind of stick on to where the tail is. And I've tried to get wrinkle textures into that as well. And going down into his belly section. Underneath the middle section of his lower jaw, I've just added this kind of neck bulge. And again, I've put a few wrinkles in that as well. Right, alongside that, I've been making the smaller sections for the top of his head. So these are the kind of little flaps that open up when the heat seeker is in action. You can see they've got little ridges and things, and I've been um, making them on the aluminium foil so that they don't get stuck, basically. Um, you can see what I'm going to do is add some soft milliput right into this hollow, and then I'm going to add the flaps on top, get them nicely positioned, and then let it all kind of harden. Right, this is the final stage that he's at before I'm going to start painting him. You can see I've added lots of extra details. So we've got all these kind of head wrinkles, lots of ridges and lots of extra texture. You can see I've put the head flaps on there in position now. And I think that kind of really starts to kind of add to the overall look of him. But yeah, loads of loads of little extra details here and there there's also like this sort of fissure line that goes right down the center of his um, whole head and that was quite good fun to do you basically just put flat layers of milliput on and then you can press down into that on the jaw sections I've done a similar sort of thing added thin layers of milliput and then that allows you to add all these little kind of stripes and extra texture on the legs I've done a lot more wrinkles and I think that's kind of um, smoothed it all in overall and made it look yeah much more kind of refined and ready for painting. So for the first painting stage, I just painted him a flat pinkish brown color. This is just a mix of cadmium red, titanium white, and burnt umber. I'm using System 3 acrylic paints to do all of the painting stages on this. Next, I watered down some gray paint, and I've just started putting that on the top surfaces of like the legs, uh, the tips of the jaw, and just on the tail as well. Uh, I think that makes quite a difference. It starts to kind of bring out some of the wrinkles a little bit as well. Um, I've also used some orange color, which I just made with cadmium red and uh, cadmium yellow, just mixed together. And I think uh, that's really started to kind of make him pop, like both in the heat seeker section and also like in the center of his mouth here. You can then also water down some red and you can add that in. So I've done a little bit in the center of his mouth as well that is just red. Um, on the claws, I've just painted them flat black. I'm not worried about the base at this stage because obviously I'll paint the base right at the end and that will kind of tidy everything up. And this is how he's turned out. And I'm really pleased with the overall outcome of this. I added lots of um, darker washes, mainly kind of black watered down or very dark greys, that kind of thing really really watered down so it's like a very wet wash and you basically just run it into a lot of the kind of cracks and things and it really kind of makes those pop out you can do like a little bit of dry brushing here and there on like the higher points and you can see i've used a hot melt glue gun just to um yeah just do a few drips here and there uh, bits of drool and slime coming from like the heat seeking section and also inside the mouth I think that just adds a little something that's quite nice. Um, I faded red into orange on his tail and I think that looks really cool as well. And I've just painted the base just in this kind of flat brown colour. I may end up adding glue to the base and then kind of dropping kind of sand and little bits of stone and things into it in a similar way to what I did with the Graboid from the original Tremors film. Okay, thanks to Milliput for sponsoring this channel. If you haven't tried Milliput before, um, go out and get yourself some. It's a really cool modeling material to use. Um, thanks for watching this video. Check out my other videos if you get a chance. Um, and hit subscribe if you want to see any videos that I post up in the future. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.